My name is Matt Bortz and I'm a graduate student at Stony Brook University where I study the group of animals that ate meat before today's dogs, cats, bears, and hyenas really took off. And so for the first 45 million years of the age of mammals, we have these animals called creodonts. And they're all over the planet. They're in North America, they're in Asia, they're in Africa, and in Europe. And so, especially in Africa, they are the apex predators. And they're from like little weasel-sized things all the way up to the largest meat-eating mammals that were ever on the planet. With these big things called Magistotherium. It's like a, a meat-eating rhinoceros. And so those animals are what I study. And until recently, how they were all related to each other and how they moved from continent to continent was something that was really, really poorly understood. We just knew there were sharp teeth all over the place. And so my research is trying to figure out who are the oldest members of this group and where do they radiate from and gain all these crazy body size adaptations and how do they fit into their ecosystems. So today, carnivores or carnivorans is the group that dogs, cats, and bears belong to. They have this set of teeth that are really specialized that are called carnassials. And the upper tooth and the lower tooth, it's their fourth upper premolar and their lower first molar slice past each other. And it's like scissors kind of slicing meat as you go along. Um, in creodonts, especially the hyenodontic creodonts, they have three meat slicing teeth lined up across their jaw. And so um, as they got bigger and diversified, um, they almost got this kind of blade going all the way down their jaw. There's an animal called hyenodon that had these three meat slicing teeth lined up in its jaw. And the lower jaw would rotate outwards and the upper jaw would rotate um, against it. And so they were constantly shearing their teeth against each other, keeping a really sharp edge. And so today, like hyenodon teeth are sharp enough, I can, I can shave with the jaw of hyenodon still because they kept that edge sharp throughout life. Um, and that's something that's kind of specialized for one group of creodonts. Um, but what really makes them different is um, their teeth are put together in a different way. And then the other thing that makes them different is the way their brains are put together. And one of the things I study, which is their skeleton, um, they have kind of different ways of moving. Um, they have ankles that are much more agile than what we see in a lot of carnivores today. Um, it seems like these really big kind of jaguar-sized animals um, had the ability to reverse their feet a little bit like squirrels today, which is kind of strange. And we know that today there are big cats that are arboreal, so maybe these are doing the same kind of thing. But the research is so new on this group that there's all these questions about how they moved and how they evolved that really are only starting to be answered by me and a couple of other researchers that have really started to get into these questions. Um, one of the reasons I love paleontology is um, partially I couldn't really make a decision when I first started working in science. Um, I was interested in chemistry, I was interested in physics, I was interested in biology. And paleontology is this integrative science where you draw on all of these different kinds of data sets. You can observe how a raccoon moves one moment and then look at geochemical data about what the climate was like to try to understand these animals. And I don't really have to choose which science I like best. I can use all of them to inform my paleontological questions.